In this video, we will discuss what a coordinate system is and how it is defined. So, let's dive into it. A coordinate system is a group of objects that allow measurement. In engineering, this group of objects is commonly a group of vectors. Specifically, for three-dimensional space, we use three vectors. For two-dimensional space, we use two vectors. In the three-dimensional space, we have a set of three objects that we can call direction vectors or axis. And we normally assign a label to them by saying that we have a direction one, two, and three. The same definitions apply for the two-dimensional space. We can call this direction number one and direction number two. And in this case, we have two axes. Now, what do we mean by this object's allowing a measurement? Well, it is very common to find this example in books and on the internet. We will have a coordinate system that has two axes. One is called X and the other one is called Y. And if we want to locate an object in this 2D plane, we will need to do some measuring. That means we need to quantify the location of this object along X, and we will need to quantify the location of this object along Y. If we do those two measurements, we will know that this object has some location or coordinates. For example, if we are talking about meters here, and meters here for X and Y specifically. And if we measure along every direction, say in this case, we have five units along X and seven units along Y. In that case, we will call this coordinate a five comma seven coordinate. And that's what we mean by allowing measurement. This X and Y axis are allowing us to measure, in this case, the location of this dot. But we could also talk about measuring velocity or maybe acceleration or in general motion. Now, how do we define our own coordinate system in a way that is useful for our problem for the specific example we're working on? All right, so let's talk about that. It is very common on the internet or in books that you might find the coordinate system already defined for you. But what happens in those cases where you're working on your own project and you need to define your own coordinate systems? And I'm going to summarize the way we define the coordinate systems in engineering in one phrase. And that phrase is, we define them with orthogonal unit vectors. And I want to be very clear on this. This is not a the only way of defining a coordinate system, but it's very convenient. And I'm going to give some details on it. All right, so first, let's break this phrase down. Let's talk about orthogonal unit and vectors. All right, so let's go with maybe the one you're more familiar with, which is vectors. Uh, when we talk about the word vectors, we just mean uh, these directions right here. So if we're talking about three-dimensional space, we will talk about three vectors or axis. The word unit here, that only means that we're going to use vectors that are unit in length, or in other words, that their length when measured is equal to one. Now, I want to emphasize that there is no restriction in using any other length, but it is very convenient to use unit vectors or vectors with length equal one. Again, it will depend on what you're going to do and what's more convenient for you. 
but in general you will define unit vectors. Finally, orthogonal means that we normally choose vectors that are 90 degrees apart from each other. And once more, this is not the only way you could define it, but it's convenient to do it this way. There is no restriction in not using vectors that are not 90 degrees apart, but that might be unnecessary for most of the cases. But again, if you need to, for some reason, do this for some application that I really cannot think of right now, but um, if you want to, there's no restriction on that. In many cases, that might just add unnecessary complexity, but there's no restriction on that. So by choosing orthogonal unit vectors as that group of objects to measure motion, that's when you end up having these drawings where you have for three-dimensional space, three vectors that are 90 degrees apart. Now I want to talk about labeling the axis. And to label our axis, we need to follow the right hand rule. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the right hand rule. I'm just gonna say that we need to follow a counterclockwise direction when naming our axis. For example, if we have these three axes, we want to name our first axis, say X, then we're going to go counterclockwise and we'll name that Y. And then we go from here counterclockwise to define our Z. You can always start at any letter or number. If you're using numbers, for example, you can use one, two, and three. You can start at any number or letter. Just make sure you're going counterclockwise to go to the next direction and then you name it with the following letter or number. Another example here could be the following. We could start with the number one here. Then we go counterclockwise to define this is the second direction. And then I need to go counterclockwise for the third direction. If you're going in counterclockwise direction and you have to find your axis in a way that you don't find the next axis and it turns out that you have defined it in the opposite way that means that you just need to correct that axis because you want to go counterclockwise all the time and being able to find the next axis for example in this diagram i could have defined z going down without knowing at the beginning and i could have tried to go from x to y and then when i try to do counterclockwise from y to z well that doesn't really much up right and that means we have defined this vector incorrectly or not incorrectly but it's not following the right hand rule so far we know that it's convenient to define our axis to be orthogonal unit vectors but we also know that there's no restriction and we can use any length in the vectors and we could use elements that are not, or directions that are not necessarily 90 degrees apart from each other. As a bonus, I'd like to mention two very important things about defining your own reference frames. First, a coordinate system is normally drawn in a way that the directions are meeting at a point that we call the origin. This is just for convenience, but it is not necessarily that they meet at the origin. You can always define axes that are not meeting at the origin. And second, you can place the coordinate system anywhere, at any location and with any orientation. You just have to be a little bit smart about how it is more convenient for you. For example, if we have, say, a pendulum and we want to define a coordinate system so that we can find or we can locate the mass of the pendulum, really, you can place a coordinate system anywhere with any orientation. However, there are some coordinate frames that might be 
more convenient for this problem. If you want to use any of these coordinate systems to define or to locate the mass of the pendulum, you can do that. However, there might be some coordinate systems that are maybe more convenient to use. I would say that a convenient reference frame and coordinate system would be located at the hinge like this. In that case, we will just need to quantify this distance along, say, this is direction one, this is direction two. So we'll need to quantify this distance along direction two, and then we'll need to quantify this distance along direction one. If you're using the other coordinate systems, like this one, you will need to quantify not only this distance and this distance to the hinge. It might be the case that you need to quantify the distance to the hinge first and then the distance to the mass. So maybe the green coordinate system is more convenient for this problem. But again, there's no restriction on where you place your coordinate system and there's no restriction on the orientation of the coordinate system. So once more, there's no need to draw the origin. And the reference frame can be placed anywhere.